an old school named after Nancy Reagan. Wednesday Adams, a high school student, walks down the hall to her little brother's locker. Opening it, Buxley falls out, all wrapped in corn and with an apple in his mouth. A psychic vision tells her where he was attacked by the bullies. Wednesday retaliates by dumping the piranhas in the pool of offenders. That's why she is excluded. Wednesday's parents, Marticia and Gomez, decided to enroll her in Nevermore Academy, an outcast school where they themselves studied and dated. The tourist drivers pass them and ask the drivers to stop the car in the forest. The driver suggested driving on, as this part of the forest is not far from the Nevermore school, to which the guy refuses, saying that he's not afraid of monsters and in vain, because soon after that his lifeless and mutilated body will be found in that very forest. At the academy, Wednesday becomes a roommate who is her complete opposite, the werewolf girl Enid, a bright personality who believes that the more colors the better. She immediately takes Wednesday on a tour of the school, representing all the cast of the students at the same time. The Adams send a thing, a sentient independent hand to look after their daughter. Wednesday has a thought duel with Bianca, a siren and a popular girl after she bullies one of the boys, Rowan. Later, Wednesday is almost killed by a gargoyle statue falling from a rooftop, but is saved by Bianca's ex-boyfriend, Zivia. While on the run from a code order therapy session, Wednesday meets Tyler, a barista at a local coffee shop, who agrees to help her escape the Nevermore. However, Adams is apprehended by Director Wims and brought back to the school. But before that, in that same cafe, she first met Sheriff Galpin, Tyler's father. When he found out that Wednesday was Gomez's daughter, he couldn't contain his emotion, calling him a murderer. When Tyler and Wednesday meet again at the local fair, Adams witnessed Rowan's death. Before that, Rowan tries to kill Wednesday. After all, his deceased mother protected that she was destroyed the academy, but an unknown monster kills him early. And by the way, at this very fair, Tyler gives Wednesday a police file on her father for a murder charge that was 32 years ago and which he secretly stole from his father. After all this situation, since our heroine is crazy and eccentric, she becomes interested in staying at school and trying to solve this mystery. Wednesday convinces a skeptical Sheriff Galpin that the monster is in fact the culprit of the murders. Director Wims also tries to convince everyone that it's just a bear operating in the local forest and killing tourists, so that the shadow doesn't fall on her school. And Rowan, a According to her and completely alive. And that's when Wednesday tries to convince the sheriff that the student was killed by a monster and they carefully try to hide it. Suddenly, Rowan appears on the doorstep and Hamid. Wednesday is overcome with dopes and she decided to investigate the murder of Rowan herself. She wanders around the campus asking about Rowan and is told that he has been expelled. Meanwhile, Wims begins to worry about Wednesday's visions, keeping a close eye on her. Suddenly, Wednesday saw Rowan, he was leaving the academy. Wednesday couldn't talk to him and she sent the thing to follow him. It turns out that Rowan is Wimps, who simply changed his appearance at the after going to the toilet at the station. Wimps again changed his appearance to an unknown man, thereby deceiving the thing. As a result, the thing loses sight of Rowan. In parallel with all the events, Wednesday begins to actively oppose the upstart Bianca Barker. Wednesday find it amusing to prove to Bianca that she has an inflated opinion of herself. She also begins to worry about the drawing in which she is supposedly depicted. And despite the fact that dirty tricks give her pleasure, she fears that she can do something really terrible. Apparently her hair is not as black as she tries to show everyone. She runs away from extracurricular activities, leaving her werewolf neighbor in his place and heads into the woods to find proof that she is not insane and Rowan is indeed dead. Having found these bloody glasses in the forest, she is visited by a vision and she sees a book from which Rowan pulls out that very unfortunate picture. Wednesday sees a book belonging to an old student body. While searching for the book, she overhears Bianca planning to win the upcoming college tournament. Wednesday joins a need to defeat Bianca and win the rowing tournament. 
tournament and they won, bypassing everyone. Finding a statue of Edgar Allan Poe, holding a book with the same symbol of Belladonna. Having solved the riddle, Wednesday discovers a secret library at the school, where he finds the very book with the page torn out. And suddenly darkness, she is in captivity. Wednesday finds herself bound and surrounded by members of an elite student society which also includes Bianca and Xavier. She frees herself for the fetus and leaves the library taking one of the books with her and not missing the opportunity to call them dilettantes. The holiday, Day of Reconciliation, is approaching in which of course the student of the Nevermore school will take part. Wims told Wednesday that she would be playing in the school band of the city's upcoming grand opening of a new monument to Jericho's founding father. During Wednesday's conversation with Xavier, she shows him a picture from a book, and he says that the next to it's a picture of Joseph Craigstone, one of the founding fathers of Jericho. At the fair, a drawing in a book leads her an exhibition at local fair, where she notices the girl she saw in her vision in the painting. But they are only decorations. After entering the cafe and talking with Tyler, she finds out where the real shady is, in which Joseph once tried to burn all the witches in the city. In the forest, Wednesday sees a vision, in which she sees the very girl who is her old ancestor and sentenced to death by Joseph Craigstone, the founding father of the city of Jericho. Joseph Craigstone intends to exterminate all outcasts. Some of them he intends to burn a leaf in the barn. As a result, Goody Adams manages to avoid death and escape. Wednesday is ambushed by the monster who flees almost immediately. And following him, Wednesday notices that the monster's footprints are turning into human footprints. She discovers that the monster is a human. Back in town, Wednesday interrupts the ceremony by using the things to set fire to the monument, for which Wims reprimands her. While investigation a new crime scene in the wood, the police find a camera that managed to film the monster. Monster. Wednesday and Think break into the coroner's office to copy the files of the monster's victims. Trying to find a pattern, Wednesday discovers that the each victim is missing somebody parts and has all been suddenly removed. Suspicion are confirmed by a conversation between the sheriff and the coroner with the second report that the last victim is missing to finger on his left foot. At one of the classes, while talking with Xavier, she noticed scratches on his neck. She finds this suspicious and follows him to his art studio, where she discovers several drawings of the monster, which lead her to a cave where she believed the monster was hiding. She has to step over her nausea and principles and invite Xavier to the ball. She brings the drawing to the sheriff, hoping to share the information, but the sheriff needs more solid evidence. Her friend Eugene shows the location of the cave he sees in the picture of the monster. There she finds and retrieves one of his clothes, after which the turn it over to Sheriff Galfin for DNA analysis. Wednesday and Tyler attend the Raven Ball held annually at Nevermore Academy together. Meanwhile, Eugene, Wednesday's classmate who helps her with the investigation despite Wednesday's refusal, walk along to the cave and witness the clothes figure blow up the monster's cave. Meanwhile, at the ball, Wednesday dances her famous dance, which has gone viral on social media. The dance is interrupted by the mass sun who in retaliation for the disrupt city ceremony launches sprinklers into the hall where the dance takes place, in which red paint is used instead of water. Wednesday has a vision in which he sees that Eugene is in danger. She heads to the forest to rescue him, but instead finds him badly injured by a monster. 